In my last video, I pieced together the timeline from the day that Summer Wells went missing. I based it on Candace Bly, who's Summer's mom, her timeline, as well as Allison, who is the mother of 15-year-old Hunter. He was with the family earlier that day. Hunter was interviewed by our buddy Chris McDonough at the interview room, and we get a bigger picture of where they went that day, as well as filling in some gaps. And it gives us a little more answers and a little more questions. So today I'm going to take you through the timeline and combine it with the one from before and show you any discrepancies. Little by little, things are starting to get a little more clear. In the morning of Tuesday, June 15th, Hunter states that Candace texted Hunter and told him that Grandma was in the hospital. Then Hunter stated that he called Candace and asked if she wanted to come by and wait because Candace stated that it's going to be a while before Grandma gets out of the hospital. Candace said as long as it's okay with Allison, Allison said it's okay, but only for a little while because Hunter's grandmother is coming over to the house. Now, according to Allison, she states that they live only five minutes away from the hospital. And the hospital where grandma was is called Holston Valley Medical Center. And it's about a 25 minute drive from the Wells home. So Candace said she'll be over to Hunter's house within five to 10 minutes. Now, Hunter states that he's not great with times, but he believes that Candace got over to the house around 11 o'clock. Allison said previously that she believes that it was between 10 and 10.30. Candace pulls up, gets out of the vehicle with Summer, and Hunter states that it's been a while since he's seen them. Here's where it's interesting. He said he was told that Dawn had gone to work with the kids. And Chris asks to clarify who the kids were and Hunter mentions two of the boys, not three, and he names the two oldest kids, but not the youngest brother who's nine. Now, I'm not sure if it was just a case that Hunter didn't finish his sentence, but it seemed like he did. So I'm curious as to where that youngest brother was at this point. But Ali said in a previous interview that the boys were staying home because they had to clean. So this is very interesting to me. Now, Hunter said that once Candace and Summer arrived, they all sat down for a bit and Summer changed into her bathing suit. Over top of the bathing suit, Hunter recalls that Summer was wearing a pink or purple tank top and shorts. He said that he asked to go fishing with Summer and swimming and that he wanted to get out of the house. Candace said to ask Allie if it's okay. Allie said it was. Hunter described Summer as excited to go fishing and swimming, and Hunter described his relationship to Summer as a sister-brother relationship. He thought that Summer really liked him because he showed her a lot of attention, and he said he would give her piggybacks when Summer asked, and also he said that Summer's brothers weren't that great to her, so he said he wanted to show her what a real brother was like. He did say that the Wells family at one point treated their family like family and vice versa. Then Candace gets a call from the grandmother and says to come pick her up. So Candace, Hunter, and Summer head to the vehicle. Once they're at the vehicle, Hunter said they moved a box to the back of the truck. And then he also said they put another box in behind the front passenger seat. So it would be in the back seat. Now Hunter said he sat in the front passenger seat and Summer is sitting in the back seat behind the driver's side. Now, I do wonder if this is her usual spot when she goes and rides in the truck with or without her brothers. You know, I know sometimes, you know, siblings will fight to get their favorite spot, but I'm wondering if that's where she likes to sit. Hunter also notes in the interview that the milk jugs were not there at that point. They come in at a later time. Now, then they leave Hunter's place and they head towards the hospital. He said that they pick up grandma and then he said not even 10 minutes later they head to Walgreens. Now from Holston Valley to Walgreens, which is located at Fort Henry and Moreland Drive, it's approximately a 15 minute drive away. Hunter states they go through the drive through and drop off the prescription and was told that it's going to be 30 to 35 minutes before the prescription is ready and Hunter mentions there's a long lineup. Now while in the drive through Hunter states that Candace gets a call from Dawn. She tells everyone to be quiet in the truck. And Hunter states that Dawn tells Candace on the phone that there's been a guy on the property who has been there for about a week or so and he's stalking other kids. Hunter said at this point he's not sure if Dawn was working or not because he says if he was, then how would he know if there was a dude, his words, on the property and looking at little kids. I say good observation. 
He also states that Don typically does call Candace every couple hours or, or so to check in, and so Hunter thought he was doing his daily checkup, but did state that what Don had said was suspicious. I have a red flag going up at this point as well. So they finished going through the drive through at Walgreens and Candace said that she had to go get cigarettes. So she goes to a discount tobacco store and Hunter describes where it's located. He says it's near a Long John Silver's, a KFC and also a McDonald's. And here's what I found. There's a discount tobacco and beer mart six minutes away from the Walgreens. But another interesting fact, there's another discount tobacco store closer to the Walgreens and closer to Warriors Park. Now you'd pass this discount tobacco store on the way to the other one, the one where Hunter said they went, but it's not a beer mart. So it's interesting to me that they choose the beer mart. We'll know why in a minute, and I'm sure you can guess. Now at this point in the interview, Hunter actually describes where everyone was sitting. He said grandma was in the front passenger seat, Summer was in the middle seat, and Hunter was on the side, which would be the left side because remember, they put the box in the right hand side be behind the passenger seat. So upon arrival at the tobacco store, Candace goes in, grabs cigarettes and puff bars, which is a nicotine vape as described by Hunter. He states it's black and purple and Candace has a blue Skittle one. Candace also buys a can of twisted tea. Just one of them, Hunter says. This is my guess why they went to the further tobacco store. So they leave the tobacco store and then they go towards the horse stable park, which in my last video, I showed you where the area was, where the little swimming hole was. It's about a 10 minute drive. Now Hunter states when they arrive, grandma stays sitting in the car because she had to load minutes on her phone. Summer, Candace and Hunter got out of the vehicle. Now, right when they get there, Hunter states that Candace gives him a twisted tea and said Candace didn't have any alcohol because she has to drive. He says that he and Candace actually share the vape together and watch TikToks. He said they were some funny videos and Candace was also scrolling on Facebook. They were also chatting about what they did that week, how long it's been since they talked to each other and were just chit chatting as usual, he said. In the meantime, Summer was in the water swimming. Now, Candace does take a TikTok video as well. We did see that and the timestamp was at 12, 21 p.m. when that occurred. Now, when grandma was done loading the minutes on her phone, she gets out of the vehicle and she starts to hang out with Hunter and Candace. Hunter states at that point, they talked to him about a water park. Then Hunter goes on to talk about Summer being underwater and he said he threw his shirt down and went into the water and grabbed Summer to see if she was okay. He said he did feel spooked and he said he called her name but he wasn't sure if she could actually hear him from under the water. He then said he pulled her up, threw over his shoulder and asked if she was okay. She said yeah and that she was just swimming. He estimates from the moment he saw that she was underwater till the time he went and grabbed her was about four or five seconds. Now, Ali stated earlier that Summer slid on a rock, went under the water, and then Hunter jumped in and grabbed her. Hunter did not explain anything about a rock at this point. He said when he turned, she was already underwater. Now, when Summer was underwater, Hunter states that Candace was talking to Grandma and they were looking at flowers and saying how pretty they were. He did state that he doesn't know how long that Summer was underwater. He said it could have been longer or shorter. He said he wasn't sure. Then he said, not even 15 minutes later that they left to go pick up the prescription. Now, Candace also stated previously that they were only there for about 20 minutes at that swimming hole. So they walked back to the car with Summer and Hunter said that Summer seemed normal. Now in the interview, Hunter also talks about another set of clothes and he says this, when she got changed from swimming, they had bought her an outfit to put on because she was supposed to go to Jonesboro, I think, yeah, Jonesboro to go to this big water park. Now this is a little confusing to me. First, where did she change? I'm just curious, was it in the truck? Second, there's mention of this park, which is an hour away and was Candace meeting someone there? Was she supposed to be going that day? Uh, was she just bringing her there and, and no one else? It seems as though Hunter brought up this park again later on in the interview, but he mentions a different day. He says about the Friday. So it's a little confusing. I'd have to get a little bit more verification on this. But we do see her later on in the video with her in the vehicle where she was wearing different clothes. So they leave the swimming hole and then they go to a place called the Hippie House. It's another vape slash tobacco store. They also sell CBD there. 
Now the store had just opened, so Hunter said Candace wanted to check it out. Both Candace and Grandma went into the store. The kids stayed back in the vehicle. Hunter states they're watching TikToks and talking about LOL dolls and that Summer loves them and also talking about poppets. Poppets are kind of like something like uh, the idea of a fidget spinner, only it doesn't spin. You just pop it kind of like those little bubble wraps. <laughs> Candace and Grandma were in the store, according to Hunter, about five minutes, and then they came out and Candace had bought two more vapes, one for her, and she gave Hunter another one. They then headed back to Walgreens to pick up the prescription. That's about a quick three-minute drive. Now, because Summer was wet from swimming, Hunter said she didn't sit in the middle at this time, that she sat on the side on a pillow which would mean Hunter was in the middle seat. Now remember again, boxes are on the right. So here again, if she was still wet, I thought she changed into her clothes after swimming. So I'm a little confused at that. So they pick up the prescription from the drive-through and then they go to Sonic Drive-In to pick up slushies. Walgreens to Sonic's is only a four minute drive. Now Hunter said he got a blueberry one, so did summer as well. Candace got a purple one and grandma got an orange one. But I had wondered in my last video, and I'm still wondering in this video, a few hours had gone by since they came to pick Hunter up. So at this point already, I'm wondering what about lunch? There's no kind of mention of food anywhere. And it's even a 20 minute drive from the hospital to the Wells house. So I'm curious if they brought something or is just the slushy to tide them over to later. Really curious about that. No mention of food. So according to Hunter, they drank the slushies in the vehicle and then headed to Priceless, which is a grocery store. It's about a 10 minute drive from Sonic and this is where the milk comes in. Both Candace and Grandma go again in the store by themselves and the kids are waiting again in the vehicle. Hunter says they're listening to music and watching TikTok, but mostly TikTok. So Hunter said he didn't notice anything unusual at all about Summer while in the car. He said that Grandma and Candace were in the store for about an hour. And he said they got groceries for the house, which they put at the back of the truck, except for the milk, where they passed Hunter the jugs of milk. There was two jugs and he held them. Hunter said he put it in the middle because there was no room on the other side of him. He also stated that he put it on his lap. Now remember still, as I said, boxes are to the right. He was in the middle, Summer's on the left, according to Hunter. He did say that he set them in the middle as well because if they fall and spill it, then he'd be left cleaning up the mess and he didn't want to do that. So they then headed to Hunter's home to drop him off. Now here's where it gets a little hazy. Hunter said that when he got out of the car, Summer was in the middle. Allie said in the video after Candace left their house that day that Summer was in the same position as the TikTok video. But Hunter said he was sitting in the middle with the milk on his lap until he got out of the car. He says, I totally thought I was sitting in the middle the entire time, but I guess not. He also thought that it was possible that Summer got out of the car, but he doesn't remember details on that as well. And you could see in the interview that Allie and Grandma was shaking their head, no, it was just Hunter. And Allie did state that in a previous interview, she said the same thing that Hunter came out and Summer was sleeping. She also said, usually if she heard my voice, she'd wake up and she'd want out of the truck. She also wanted a hug from Summer, but Candace said, no, she has to get the groceries home and the milk. Now, if we think about this, if Hunter was in the middle and Summer was on the left, which he did state that's where he sat all the way from when they got out of the swimming hole, because remember he said that Summer was wet and she was sitting on a pillow and they stayed in the car in the entire time because Candace and Grandma went in all these places. Then they could have switched positions somewhere, you know, maybe at Priceless or something, but you'd think Hunter would remember that, right? And if he was in the middle, then Hunter would have had to have climbed over Summer to get out of the vehicle. And while she was potentially sleeping, like Allison said she was. Hunter said he couldn't remember if she was sleeping or not. He wasn't paying attention. Then in the interview, Chris asks about what about the candy on the seat and also the orange soda? Hunter said that Summer's grandma bought the candy for Summer, but he wasn't sure about the orange soda and he doesn't remember about the orange soda. And again, if he was sitting in that truck and the orange soda was there when he was in it, he'd probably be sitting on it pretty much and sitting on the candy if he was sitting in the driver's seat, but he's stating he was in the middle. But my question is, when did Summer switch positions? And was there someone in the truck after 
they dropped off Hunter. Also, if we do take what Hunter says, that he was sitting in the middle and he gets dropped off, then if Candace goes and picks someone else up, she would have to make room for that person to sit in that spot if Summer was sitting in that spot. She'd have to move Summer over to the middle spot and maybe that's when the jugs got moved because the jugs were moved. The jugs are now on the opposite side in the TikTok video and they're leaning up against the box. But Hunter said he's in the middle, he had it on his lap and Summer was on this side and he put the jugs down, which makes sense. So the question is, who sat where? And when did they switch? In the picture, you can see the jugs on the right-hand side of Summer's head. And when Hunter said he left, he took the jugs which were sitting on his lap, he put it in the middle, and he left. Chris in the video said it looked like Summer was leaning up against the door. But in the video that I saw, unless there's another picture or a video I don't know about. But in the video that I saw, Summer was leaning her right hand side onto the milk jug. So it does make sense that he would put them in the middle and then he would leave. If he was sitting in the passenger seat and Summer was in the middle because it was mentioned once and I had to rewind it quite a few times. I'm not sure if he meant she was in the middle of the seat but at one point he said Summer was in the middle, so it's confusing. If he was in the passenger seat and Summer was in the middle and he put the jugs down, then it makes sense who switched the jugs. But he would be sitting on the orange soda and the candy. Unless after those 40 minutes after he left and the TikTok video was created, which was 309, that Summer had these Skittles or whatever the candy was and it was all over the seat. Or it just fell out while, she, while Candace was driving. Now, Hunter does say that he gets out of the car and goes to the front of the vehicle to get his vape that Candace bought for him and then goes into his house. Again, Allie says that this was around 2.30 p.m. So Candace leaves and that 3.09 p.m. video was taken and Summer had her head against these milk jugs. So the question that Chris keeps asking is, how did the milk get rearranged? Now, my question is, was there another stop? Remember, Hunter doesn't remember the orange soda. He only remembers candy given to Summer by Grandma. And then Hunter would be sitting on that candy, possibly. Now, when we hear the video, the question was asked, is her arm still up? And the answer was no. And then you hear, oh, that's what I wanted to catch. Now, Allie states about that video, she says it's kind of creepy. The whole thing is kind of creepy. Could Candace have stopped and gone back and adjusted the milk jugs? And if so, why? Or, as I said, did she have a pit stop before she got home? Then, according to Candace, once they got home, Summer was planting flowers with her mom and grandma. Grandma gave her a piece of candy and she asked to go inside the house. Summer went in the house, told her brothers that she was going downstairs to play with her toys, and then that's the last anyone has seen her ever again that we know. Then Summer was reported missing by 6.30 p.m. by dawn. At 7.30 p.m., Candace calls Hunter, and Hunter was hanging at the park with his girlfriend, but Candace calls and says, Summer's missing, Summer is missing. Hunter thought at first that she was joking, because he says when she likes to get high and drunk, that she tends to forget where the kids are, or thinks they're missing when they're really just playing in the front yard. So Candace says Summer is missing, Hunter says, okay, why don't you just go look outside and then tells her to call Allie. That way he knows if she's pulling his leg or not. So on Wednesday, June 16th, a day later, Candace calls Hunter again. And she says she's sitting at the police station and she's asked to do a second polygraph. Hunter states he knows too that she did. The same day, TBI interviews Hunter. Then on Thursday, June 17th, Candace takes a drive to Hunter's house. And she tells Hunter not to mention the alcohol to the authorities that she gave him. And it's interesting because when Candace was interviewed quite a little bit of go in the news, she talked about the timeline that day and conveniently left out the discount tobacco store and the hippie house where she got the puff bars and also the twisted tea. 
Oh, and she also said she couldn't give time details because she said, and I quote, you know, I really can't tell you all the time details because time gets away from you when you're trying to enjoy yourself. Candace went on to ask Hunter what he talked about with the TBI and Hunter said only about the timeline and she said it better be the only thing. Now, when Chris asked Hunter what his gut feeling was about Candace, his answer was she had something to do with it. That day that Candace showed up to Hunter's, Candace went back to her vehicle for a moment and while she did that, Hunter grabbed her phone and wanted to look into it to see if she had anything to hide. He said he went through her photo gallery and trash and he saw something on the phone that was a message from her drug dealer, he said, and it says it was done. He says he was suspicious of Candace. He did say there were 13 messages that were deleted between her and her drug dealer. Now, he said the first message was the one that said it was done. He said he didn't have time to read the second one, which would have been her response because Candace was coming back and he had to put her phone down. She asked him if he went through her phone and he said no. Now, his gut feeling about the whole situation, he said that either they had something to do with it, meaning Candace and the drug dealer, or they also meaning uh, those guys and the family. Now, Hunter questions Candace further because he says how odd it was when they announced a $25,000 reward that Candace went down, zooming down the road to the police station. He did say if Summer was his daughter, that he would do everything in his power for her. He wouldn't just sit at the house and, as he says, collecting dust. He described Summer's grandma as grumpy, controlling, and trying to run everything. When asked, what do you think should happen to the person that did this to Summer? And he said, they should be locked up for a very long time because that was my little sister. She's not the type of girl to go from the swing that's up there. There's a lot of mentions about that swing in this case, isn't there? So now we're left with some questions and a little more answers, but I'd like to know, did Candace go straight home that day after Hunter was dropped off or did she make another or a few more pit stops? What time did she actually arrive home? Was someone else sitting in that vehicle after they dropped Hunter off? And that's why the milk jugs were potentially rearranged or were they? And Summer was now in the middle or was Summer in the middle before and Hunter was at the side the whole time. There's conflicting information. If the boys were home while Summer was planting flowers, but they were at work with Dawn earlier, then they'd most likely get a ride back by Dawn, one would think. And if that's the case, then what time did Dawn drop off the boys? And when did he get back to work? Because Dawn says that he was at work, got the call from Candace, and then came home. And why did Hunter only mention two boys that day, not the three brothers who went to work with Don? Was it that he just didn't finish his sentence? Or was it the only two that he thought that went? And what's the deleted messages all about? 13 messages deleted and it said, it is done. I also wonder what the timestamp was on that as well. It'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Hunter also said, and I quote, I just know that they had to have done something because she did not walk off that property. That's all I know. Let's have a chit chat below. Let me know your thoughts. Keep it classy in the comments or it will be deleted or I will turn the comments off. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please like and please share. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.